to Sandcast, Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Mewerder. Featuring today, Mr. Ryan Darty. Episode number two, now episode number 97. Yeah, right. We made it. First <laughs> real around. episode and then the last yeah. episode. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. happy to bring you guys out. You know, this is it. The grand finale. You're tiring us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even though uh, we don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we have you guys have to be back. <laughs> For sure, and it's good to just be back here. I don't know when the last time we've done a podcast in the studio was. You've yeah. been all over the map. Yeah, man. Oh my gosh, it's been it's been a while. I've seen you like once in the last <laughs> no. like two months or so. It's been crazy. Like over the off season, I was like, oh, like this will be really easy to keep up with the podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I definitely knew that. Yeah, Try was just busy dominating on the world stage, just yeah. taking you know fourths and world champs, playing the semis. Pretty awesome. Fourth and twenty fifth. <laughs> just uh, riding that roller coaster. It's a tough yeah. tour, right? right? There's a lot of guys that can play. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of the story of the tour, right? Nowadays, it's like. The last team last week could easily get a gold the next week. Yeah, it, like, you know, there's, uh, we were kind of talking about this before the podcast started, but there's got to be, you know, three, four, maybe five teams where they're like, oh, they're elite level teams. You think they're going to be, you know, making good runs. But aside from that, there's 15 teams every tournament where I'm like, oh, yeah, that team could medal and it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Like it, it's, it makes total sense that this team does really well. So look at uh, this, uh, this past week uh, in Stad, Brower Mewson are back. I mean, yeah. they're supposed to be, like, on the podium every week, yet yeah, they're, like, almost... They were, like, the last team... They took back-to-back-to-back to back to back 17th. And they were they were going to be in the qualifier, almost. Yeah. And then now they're back on the podium. Look at Chile. Chile, they won right. the two events and, um, in the beginning of the year. Big events. Yes, yeah, Sydney. They won a three and a Sydney four star. Guitar. Yeah. And then now they're kind of... They're just kind of a normal back team to, again. Back to being yeah. Chile. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, been... and then you look at, you know, Simon and Guto came out of the country quota, came out of the qualifier, and then beat Stoyanovsky and Krasilnikov, who right. just won world champs. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is, that's just what, like, Simon does. He did the same thing in Fort Lauderdale yeah. two years ago. Like, he comes out of the qualifier, just, like, never looks like he's taking a match seriously, and then he just wins a major. <laughs> he, he does strike you as that, like, kind of goofy, fun-loving kid, just having a great time, yeah. and then he just blocks me off the absolute court like, <laughs> yeah. yeah I've played him so many times and he always blocked really really well against me like it's one of those guys that you're surprised he hasn't done more done better recently but you know similar to a Brower Mewson or a, a lot of other teams where yeah the, you know parts are all there it's just tough to get it to all come together at the right time in order for you to you know take home some hardware but uh, I think that's just you know a good sign for the sport it means it's yeah. you know a little bit of parody it's growing it's getting better it's uh uh, just kind of a necessary evil for us players that are you know still grinding it out. Right. Yeah, you guys are both like between the <clears throat> countries traveled between you two. You put in a lot of miles this year. Yeah, uh, this was my first year doing a Brazil to China trip. It is forty five consecutive hours of travel. Yeah, uh, like yeah. So uh, imagine that was, the, that was the worst trip I've ever. <laughs> no, we did it. I, I, I was on that. Trip. Oh, you were on the same one. Not yeah. the same flight. So any of the years was like a forty one. 45, it was 45. 40, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think uh, most it was so people bad. was five legs of the trip, you know, five different flights. I think I might have got it in four, but it's, you know, you. I talked to my girlfriend just, oh, yeah, like, uh, how's it at the airport? And I was like, I still have an eight-hour flight and a two-hour flight before I even get to the country where we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. like, what are you talking about? Yeah, in terms of, yeah so... Uh, some some interesting, exciting travels, and uh, got to see some new places I've never been to Sydney before. So Australia was really really yeah. fun. I was glad to go there. Uh, same with Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, basically, playing on the surface of the sun. It was so hot, but uh, really really cool, <laughs> really cool country. And uh, I was happy to get to go and uh, uh, kind of broaden my horizons a little yeah. bit. I feel like you're one of the few guys who like goes and, and appreciates where they're going and gets to see what the place is all about. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't necessarily want to give you that vibe because it wouldn't be right. Like, most yeah. of the time, like, I, I like the fact that I get to see new places. Like, I, before I played beach volleyball, I'd never been out of the country. So yeah. now I've been to, you know, 20 different countries on five continents. Like, that's a very cool thing for me. Um, however, you know, these are work trips. And if I'm, you know, somewhere where I don't have a ton of money and I, you know, it's really hot, I'm not going to go sightseeing and, right. you know, lose my legs uh, for the rest of the tournament. So... Uh, I do try to, you know, see if I can, you know, see the, at least drive by the Sydney Opera House while I was there, or, yeah. you know, get in uh, the water at uh, Malaysia when I was in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, funny thing was, is the ocean was about knee high deep, like maybe a foot and a half deep for, 
I don't know, 200 yards, like it was, you were walking forever. You were walking on the sandbar. <laughs> you were walking on the sandbar forever, and it was boiling hot. Like, it, it had to be 85 degrees, the water. So you play this match you you where, you're just, rolling where you're just exhausted, and then you're as overheated as possible, and like, even the FIVB refs are giving you as much time as you want, and they never do that, yeah. mm-hmm. just because it's, like, dangerous. You finally are like, all right, I get to go take a dip in that big blue ocean out there, and you're just walking <laughs> in warm water for two football fields. When does going, it get doesn't cold? doesn't make any sense. Why is this happening? But, well, uh, you were knee-deep. The locals were neck yeah, deep. Yeah, everybody else was swimming, but I was, I was knee-deep, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And a 45-hour trip, too, like, I mean, you're not a small guy. How tough is it as a seven-footer to... So I, I was very, very lucky. Like uh, uh, I, I've gotten to know how to book the flights ahead of yeah. time in terms of like I fly Delta. If I book a flight on Delta, I can pick an emergency exit row seat right out of the gate. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have Delta flights from there to there because, you yeah. know, Brazil to China, you're not going to be flying a lot of Delta. Uh, so I flew Qatar Airways, you know, just kind of gave a pitiful look to the woman at the gate. And she was like, oh, you know what? We have this exit row seat. Why don't you sit in this yeah. one? Um, so, you know, sometimes it works out great and you get the emergency exit row seat, but I've, I've had it where I'm flying home for, you know, a 13-hour flight and I'm just in an aisle seat where I physically can't put my knees to hips inside, right. so I have to kind of lean out into the <laughs> whole aisleway. And the poor, you know, stewardess or flight attendants is just saying, like, listen, I'll tap you on the shoulder when I come by, but, you know, I'm bringing a cart and stuff. On, you know, if yeah. you fall you, asleep, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you fall asleep for 15 minutes and then this woman has to come by and you have to take your legs Rand. out of the way. Yeah, so. <laughs> Dude, some of the ladies come in hot and they don't want to tell you so they just reverse it they back it up and just hit you with their butt <laughs> right. just hit everyone with their butt on it. you can tell they do it on purpose yeah too. that's why i was so like thankful she was at least like hey i feel real sorry that you're on yeah. this full flight but uh i have a job to do so you know you're not going to be laying down in the aisle right. yeah. as much as you want to right yeah. it's really tough when there's like a language barrier with you and the attendants and they're like trying to tell you you know we're coming but you, they can't really get it across, and you're like, right. uh, and this so you just kind of like figure it out after a couple of minutes. Yeah, <laughs> weird interactions. Yeah, I've had it where I was in China pantomiming, uh, you know, with my hands and gestures at the ticket, like to the woman, <laughs> like I am very tall. Like, what seat is available? Like, is this seat gonna have leg room? And the woman responds, I don't speak English. And I was like, I didn't say anything in English. I didn't say anything in any language. I was just trying to gesture yeah. with my hands. Uh, that probably doesn't come through very well in a podcast. You know, I should wait until you guys video it. But yeah, it was, uh, it was an experience. Yeah. We mentioned, you, like, you've seen like 20 countries, five continents. Is there anything that you want to see? That, you, that like, Is there any tournament that you haven't been to that you're like, that I really want to go to? You know what? Uh, I had Klagenfurt for the longest time, and, yeah. I, and I got to go there and just see what the experience was like. Um, probably similar to what you were talking about with you know the recent world champs, where like the people are just so enthusiastic and going nuts for yeah. it, and like having just a great time. Uh, that was an exceptional event. But you were in Vienna, right? Uh, uh, world champs last yes. year. Yes. Right? Uh, so world champs when I was in 2017 was Amsterdam, and it was one of the coolest experiences. No, they, 15. That was 2015. 2015 was... It that was, was that Amsterdam. Game? 17 was The Hague, right? 17 was Vienna. Because I, oh, missed, yeah, I yeah. missed... I was with you in The Hague. You, or, you, I was in The Hague, you were in Amsterdam. Yeah, that's correct. I, I apologize. I, I, I got the timing wrong, yeah. So you weren't in uh, Vienna? I did go to Vienna. Yeah, we were in Vienna. Okay. Me and, me and Hyde played there. Yeah. Uh, super hot. Yeah, uh, that one was, um, again... The people were enthusiastic, and they put on a really. It was good a event. really big stadium. As well, really right? big stadium, like yeah. it was, uh, but it's there was a little bit of a different vibe between like you know Klagenfurt, where okay. you could just see like how enthusiastic and how right. much of like a party it was. Yeah. Versus like people coming to a sporting event, like it was a very fun sporting event, or like Amsterdam was just such a unique venue. Like I was literally in downtown Amsterdam, like looking at the you know these famous architectural buildings. Yeah. And I was playing in the middle of it, like with fans sh- screaming for you yeah. so uh yeah like some some very cool experiences i don't have too much on my bucket list at this point like uh i think for me it's going to be like once i'm kind of moving away from the sport doing all of the like kind of little fun tournaments that i've never done i've never done mother load pot sound rumble uh nice. Mopaka boat ride uh dino i definitely want to do the dino oh, yeah. in hawaii um, and I'm sure there's a few others like Rocky Point is supposed to be a really fun one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna definitely try to mix mix those in before. Some I'm... grass volley. I heard the grass volley tour is cool. 
The apparently the grass in Will Pack is crazy. Um, it's three, right? Three yeah, man. Yeah. It's threes. Because uh, the Holmgrens live for it. Right, and it, that's their like home turf. They have, you know, yeah, t- tons Brian of Brian came out and played um, the beach side at least and made the finals. Ended up losing to uh, Miles and Billy. Okay. In the finals, so it was good to see Brian playing again. It's yeah. Been a while. He's such a good guy. Like the, the both of those guys are really good. They you know play it the right way, which is awesome. But uh, everybody I've talked to about the grass tournaments just is, is like. Yeah, you're sore for like an ungodly oh. amount of time afterwards. Like you wouldn't think that you could be sore a week later after yeah. a tournament, but it's just a ton of games in a row on on a much harder surface, and your body just wears it. And so. it's side out too, right. so you can have some really long matches. Right. You know, yeah. Baranek uh, made the finals in Pottstown with Kalinski. and he took a week off of practice. Yeah. This is like Eric Baranek, like 22 year old, like as fit as can be, has more energy than any human being I know. I need to be right. off. <laughs> yeah, and he is as excited about volleyball as anybody. Like, he yeah. wants to get out there and then just, nope, I can't do it. Like, so, so I can only imagine what my lanky ass would have to deal with if I try to run up to the net after that many matches. So that definitely can't be uh, anything during the uh, you know part period of my career where I count on this for money. Once, yeah. once I'm done with that phase, <laughs> right. then I'll play the fun ones. Yeah, totally. And with where you are in career, having a little pivot with partners. Yeah, yeah. So uh, me and Hayden are going to play in Edmonton. It's a three-star. Uh, we leave tomorrow for that one. I don't know when you air this podcast, but we leave uh, Tuesday. We'll so when it comes out, you will have left a day ago. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and then after that, I'll play the remaining AVPs with uh, Miles Evans. Uh, me and him are going to play. Uh, kind of a mutual thing with me and Hayden. Like I, you know, I haven't been playing at a very high level, so it's one of those like, if you're not playing real well, ends you're kind of miserable. Like, what what's the point? You right. know, try to do something different, try to mix it up. Um, so you know, no no ill ill feelings. Wish Johnny the best. Hope that he's able to you know find a good guy and you know keep dominating until he's fifty years old, or whatever, <laughs> whatever his game plan is. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try something new for the rest of the year, and I think it'll be good. I got a couple practices in with Miles. He's a good kid, great volleyball player. So yeah. uh, I'm excited to to get after it with him. See if I can't qualify for Hawaii. Yeah, you're really hitting uh, different ends of the age spectrum. Right. Yeah, just <laughs> I, I figured out that like you know I I need to start stealing Hayden's wisdom of like being the vampire and sucking the energy out of your younger guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna just you know the, all the younger guys. I'm gonna try to take as much juice from them as possible over the next four years. What um what made you go with Miles? Because there's a lot of you know young defenders uh, out there like Brannick, for instance. Um, you know, is, is an up-and-comer, and then Miles is obviously really good with a lot right. of international points, too. He's going to be in Edmonton with Philly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, I, I've seen Miles play for a couple of years, and he's getting better and better. Um, I don't know how he's going to try to turn that corner um, in terms of being, like, a, a good player to a great one, like those guys that compete with everyone uh, of, of the top players in the country. But, I mean, because the skills are there, uh, I think it's just – you know the experience, the the comfort with you know being at the absolute top, top level, uh, and you know hopefully we can get out there and do some good things. Uh, I think with his uh, his natural ability is being able to be physical and my kind of calm demeanor, yeah. helping him kind of bring it, bring the energy down a little bit when he gets a little too ramped up. Uh, I think that might help us out a bit. Yeah, and you mentioned you're doing AVPs. Are you going to try to do international stuff as well, or is that kind of TBD? Well, it's kind of TBD. Right now, uh, one of the good problems that the U.S. has is that we have a lot of teams that are doing well. So uh, I think with me and Hayden, we would be like maybe the sixth team. I think after this, we might even be the seventh, which means that if you have a five-star event, the seventh team doesn't even get to sign up. They they ax it out to where the max amount of six teams can sign up. And then, you know, four, five, and six are playing a country quota to play to the qualifier to try to get into a tournament. It's a pretty long run when you're trying to, you know, make money in the sport versus, you know, uh, I would not be surprised if I kept trying to do some smaller events that I would be able to get into. Uh, But, you know, trying to do those, you know, competing against all these other teams, especially, you know, with me and Hyden so far, we haven't beaten any of them. You know, we've got losses against Billy and Stafford, against Casey. And we, we beat Casey and Chase in one uh, country quota, but then they beat us in an AVP. We lost to uh, Reed and Theo in a um, uh, world tour event, uh, three-star. So uh, if you don't have the wins, you know, betting $2,000 plane ticket that you're right. going to go out there and take it down might not be the smartest thing. So uh, right now I'm kind of in that position where I got to see if I can work my way back up by uh, 
you know, getting some smaller finishes. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is also like, you know, all you guys that are grinding out, like tries in a really good spot for the Olympics, you know, competing with Jake and Taylor, Phil and Nick. So those teams are going to be doing that and they have no choice. They're, you know, going to be battling until the very end. And, you know, as a volleyball fan, that's like super fun to watch. Like yeah. that's like the, those races are great. <laughs> um, but once that kind of starts getting filtered out, like, you know, the next four years, People tend to shift around a little bit. We have a much older demographic than a lot of other volleyball uh, right. countries. Uh, so, I mean, like, Try and Trevor, they're one of the only young teams, and you're, what, 30 years old? Just turned 30. Just yeah. turned 30. You know, Trevor's probably 29 ish. You know, Taylor's real young. But aside from that, like, most of our guys are mid to late 30s, including yeah. myself. So it's more of a just like, all right, let's see if we can stay in that race and who's going to start to move into something new. You know yeah. what I mean? Our. Yeah. The U.S.'s definition of young in beach volleyball is so much different <clears throat> than insane. the rest of the world. It's insane, yeah. Polish guys Program. are retiring by the time our young guys are getting out onto the right. world tour. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, uh, I was talking to Case Beer about it, and we were watching the Partain brothers play, who are, I think they're 17 and 18. They were playing the Seattle qualifier in the last round, and Case Beer was like, you know, we all say that like these kids are super young and they're going to be so good, but Duda won best player in the world last year. She's 19. Yeah. <laughs> in Brazil, it's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, you know, Jeremy, like, he's had a great year, too. Like, him and him yeah. and Kane were playing awesome. He's serving the heck out of the ball. Like, he's one of those, like, good younger players that I'm talking about. Like, who we, we have some uh, good talent there. But, you know, he goes and plays in Brazil all the time in the offseason. He, he's raising his kid out there. Jeremy's so, older than me. Yeah, Jeremy. He's, yeah, <laughs> like, but, oh, you, you know, young whippersnappers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, he gets to see, like, those younger players, like, yeah. pretty consistently. We're like, oh, well, you know, Brazil's got tons of young talent versus, like, you know, our younger guys. You know, one, they just don't have the experience, and, you know, they, they're they not able to really jump those top guys just yet. Like, Troy yeah. Field, who's playing great and jumping super high and physical, and he's going to have a, a good long volleyball career ahead of him of doing some good things. But, like... It's gonna be really hard for him to just get his foot in the door for the next two years, right. and in anything internationally, you know, he's doing great. Him and Timmy uh, uh, on the AVP, and they're gonna be right there in the mix with everybody for that. But if he, his goal is to start playing internationally. Well, I mean, he's probably gonna to have to start doing like two stars and one stars just to have some finishes. Yeah. You know, if you even like, you know, gets picked up by some young defender who's trying to make a switch, like you can't pick up a guy with no points because it puts you at the bottom of the heap. You know? Yeah. So. It makes it fun and exciting. You know? Yeah. It's uh, it's crazy, too, because in Hermosa, I think Troy and Tim are going to be the one seed, probably. Uh, wow. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, yeah. they, the the New York points, the World, the Gold Series has great points for those yeah. three main events, and they did well in that New York event. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they, they beat us in uh, Seattle. They're doing they're doing good things. Like, I, I like their odds. Yeah. That's and, crazy. I, I don't think I've ever even been a one seed before. Really? Yeah. I did. One, I think one time, me, <laughs> me and Johnny Mayer took down, we were the one seed in uh, uh, New Orleans the last year ah. they had it there. And then we won it. You guys always play oh, there you go. Well. New Orleans, yeah, we uh, we lost 21-8 in the first game of the finals. Again, and just and lulled them to sleep. Yeah. Just <laughs> rocked the black baby. And then we just took it down. Johnny Mayer played out of his mind the last two games. I mean, I was in the doghouse. It wasn't Johnny that blew it the first game. Like, <laughs> but, like, you know, he was he was cool enough to me just going down to the bench and be like, don't worry, it wasn't that bad. Like, oh, I, I'm not going to play that bad in the next games. And he'd just be like, okay, great. Like, good. I would rather you not play that bad. Yeah, it's funny. You've actually had, like, pretty much only veteran partners your whole career, I feel like, right? Is this the first time you've gone with a young partner? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you, my... You've had some of the great partners, actually, I, from the beginning. I've, I have been lucky enough to play with a murderer's row of the best defenders in the U.S. Yeah, let's, like, hear, let's hear the list. So my list is started with Casey Patterson, mm-hmm. um, Todd Rogers, uh, Nick Lucena, uh, Johnny Mayer, uh, John Hyden, back to Johnny... Uh, I think it was a, <laughs> That's all of them. Back to John Mayer, <laughs> Billy Allen, and then Hyden. Billy, yeah. yeah, and Billy Allen. So I mean, like, <clears throat> yeah, like really excellent defenders that, I, that I've had the chance to learn from. But again, I was always the younger uh, yeah. or the guy that was learning a little bit more. So, uh, as, and as somebody who, you know, tries to teach and thinks that I know a little bit about the game, like it might be fun to try to help out Miles a little bit, see if... Uh, See if I can maybe you know guide him a little bit. Yeah. He's used to playing with Billy Kalinsky, and Billy's got a pretty good mind for the game as well. Mm-hmm. Like he was, uh, he gets about as much out of it as as, as he possibly can. Yeah. So uh, I doubt I'm going to be able to tell Miles anything he hasn't heard before. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. You 
you you came into the sport like later than most individuals, and then you were like an older young guy. Yeah. Yeah. So trying I mean, to learn and absorb from all these other veterans, and now it's probably going to be cool, nice, like refreshing energy for you to be like, ah, like right. I'm yeah. not being talked down to. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it was it was funny. Like our first couple times practicing, Miles just kept coming in for the high five, and like Hayden, like we, you know, we never high five. Hayden, was, Hayden's all efficiency. He's not going to go out of his way to high five. It was <laughs> absolutely right. You know, this better than if your everyone. hands walk by each other and they tap, it's okay. But yeah, exactly. You're not like, going to waste shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> so he's saying he's like, so imagine you get an ace, and then I have to walk all the way up and high five the blocker, and then walk all the way back, like. Yeah, that's, you know, a bunch of extra steps that adds up through the tournament. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, you know, he said that to me. I was like, that makes perfect sense. Like, I'm, I'm in. Like, so, like, literally, he would get an ace, and I would point to him. Like, yeah. hey, good, good job. Like, yeah. You know. And then, like, Miles would get an ace, and I'd point, and then he's, like, right behind me, like, slapping me in the back. Like, yeah, let's do this. Like, you know, I don't know, Tuesday morning practice at 9 a.m. I'm yeah. like, oh, all right. Like, I have to get used to this uh, Puppy dog energy. Yeah. yeah. No, it's all good though. He's uh he's he's been playing real well. Like you just said he won Wapaka against yeah. some good teams out there. So so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think I think it's been uh not a long time coming, but I think people have noticed Miles' talent. Uh him and Bill, but he's got like this natural giftedness, he's got the athleticism right. to really maybe take his game to this next level. Yeah, Whereas super just, quick. Yeah, super quick. Like super Bill's like deal. maxing out I don't want to say maxing out what what he's got right now, but but he's not as quick or physical or has that like super quick touch. And right. Miles is kind of like yeah, like that puppy dog. Like he makes some amazing plays, and you're like, oh damn! Like that's the those are the tangibles that a great player has, you know. So yeah. if he puts it all together, which it seems like he's kind of slowly doing, um, he could easily be more, moving into that kind of great category you were talking about. Right. Like, I, I remember having a conversation with Adrian Carambula, and he was just saying, like, you know, volleyball is all about decisions. Like, you're making a decision, like, in the spur mm-hmm. of the moment. You've got to make it quick, and you've got to, you know, take in this information. And, like, you know, you, you know, I was a big guy who was young, and I was able to jump and get higher than most. So my decision was swing high and hard 99% of the time. Like, if something, you know, happened where I happened to hit a cut shot, congratulations. But <laughs> almost never, like, because that was the smart decision for me. I, I waited for you to do those. To, <laughs> yeah, to bring try, them down to me I all try, the time. I tried it once, and then try got it, so I never did it again. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, but, like, and that's and that's kind of the, the nature of the game. And one of those things that were, like, you know, the old school players would say, like, yeah, the new guys, like, the new, you know, beach volleyball players, they go out, they practice for two hours three days a week and that's their day versus like they used to just go and play all day mm-hmm. and you start to learn to make really good decisions like you, right. you see things you pick up things you understand when this is a good time and when it's not and a lot of that you know you can't get from like reading it in a book or you know watching video you have to just be in it and realize like oh this is why that didn't work out mm-hmm. so um uh, like I, I i think that i'm a much better volleyball player now than i was you know you know six seven eight years ago even though i was probably more athletic then just because you know now i i make better decisions like i, I kind of understand the game a little bit more yeah. so uh i think you know you take a, that kind of aspect and you put a guy like miles who you get a ton of reps in him there, there's really a pretty high ceiling on what but, he can so do. you have the you're not a defender but you can always give the advice from the perspective of hey Here's what Raji would do behind me. Right. Here's some stuff that that Johnny would do. Here's some stuff that Mary would do. You know, give advice like that. Because when I first came on the beach, it was a lot of that from Hayden, yeah. where he's like, "Hey, Sean Scott would do this, this. Like, try this because this worked for Sean." Yeah. That that was a lot of our dialogue, and that helped me a lot. Yeah, I would say like because I, <laughs> I I took a lot of pride, and I think my my year when I played with Casey Patterson was uh, in that year. I think I got better than anyone else in terms of improvement from one period to the next. For sure. And I would say the next year was you. You played with Hyde, and you went from a pretty good qualifier team to going to be a guy that's going to wow, this guy can play against anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be like, all right, making those better decisions. Like, it wasn't like you physically got that much yeah. better. Like, it was just, all right, you know, I know how to do this. It it makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, being a Hawaii guy, you've got, like, the pedigree. It, wasn't, it didn't take long, but there's still something about, like, I'm playing against elite level players I'm playing yeah. against guys that don't make these silly mistakes. You know, like, uh, totally. I don't know if you've ever read, like, that 
tennis book. I think it's called like Winner's Tennis, where it's, you know, the idea of amateurs, all you have to do is just get the ball back over the net. The smartest thing you could do. Kind of like low-level volleyball if you go to... Let like, them make the mistake. Some, some kids tournament, there's plenty of coaches that have their, their girls just hitting the ball over on one because it's pretty tough when you're 11 years old to pass, set, and hit well. They right. make a mistake and you got a point. And all of a sudden you win the tournament. That doesn't work once they get to a certain point. And right. you have to switch it to like, I can't just not make mistakes. I have to hit winners. I have to do right. something that causes me to score the point. So it's like that, you know, uh, baseball analogy of like, oh, just put the ball in play and just keep a bat on the ball. And then all of a sudden you get to a level where, oh, hitting little ground balls, like they don't make errors anymore. Like I'm right. just grounding out right. every time. So. <laughs> Going to pause right there really quick for a quick word from our sponsors. Hey, they're the ones who keep the show going. We got to give them a shout out. All right. So shout out as always to our guys at Wilson who are giving out all the best balls on the AVP tour, giving out the best balls on the college tour, the CBVA. Everybody uses Wilson and it's for a reason. And you probably do too if you're listening to the show and you probably need new balls. So if you do, give us a shout at Wilson Sand on wilsonvolleyball.com for a 20% discount. All right, that is Wilson Sand for 20% discount for the best balls in the game. All right, so go over to Wilson. Use the best balls out there. You can get them decorated by Nicolette Martin. Have a great time with them and uh, and use that code for a 20% discount. Lord knows we all need them in beach volleyball, so go ahead and give me give me use. And just as we all need volleyballs, we also all need recovery devices, all right, especially for those of us who are traveling all over the place. Recovery is key, which is why Firefly Recovery is our guys for that. You can just strap these things on your knee or wherever you are injured or need some recovery, and Firefly has you covered. It simulates the blood flow down the legs or wherever you are injured, and it kind of it just heals it. You could be at work putting them on. It's going to heal you up. You could be on an airplane. Thank goodness that's where I spend half of my time these days, and it's going to heal you up. Firefly Recovery is your spot, and you can use our code SANDCAST. Then you get 10% off of Firefly Recovery. So you got 20% at Wilson. You got 10% at Firefly. You are set up. Now for our final but not least Sponsor, we have Pacific Coast Wealth Management. All right, they are some of the guys who are responsible for putting on such an excellent event at the Laguna Open, so it's always good to give them support. And if you need any type of financial support, they have your back. So you can get up a free consultation at Pacific Coast Wealth Management. All right, and they uh, we're going to give you a the Pacific Coast Wealth Management Olympic Breakdown. All right, so unfortunately, Russia is number one for the guys. We got Vyacheslav Krasilnikov and Oleg Stoyanovsky ranked number one in the Olympic race. Number two, the Norwegian buddies, the Beach Volley Vikings, Anders Moll and Christian Sorum. Number three, we have the Polish Todd Rogers, Gregors Fijalek, and Michael Brill. Esteban and Marco Grimalt are right behind them. The number one American team in the current Olympic race is Tri Bourne and Trevor Crabb, our only split blocking duo in the country. On the women's side, this is a much more American filled affair. We have Rebecca Cavalcanti and Ana Patricia Silva as number one in the world. They're from Brazil. Number two at the moment, Kerry Walsh Jennings and Brooke Sweat. Number three, April Ross and Alex Kleinman. Number four, Canadians. Heather Bansley and Brandy Wilkerson, number five, another Canadian pair. There are buddies up north. Let's give them some love. Melissa Humana Paredes and Sarah Pavin. Uh, checking in the U.S. also in the top ten, Sarah Hughes and Summer Ross and Kelly Clays and Sarah Sponsel. A lot to change, obviously, in the coming months as some of the bigger events come up. But that is your Pacific Coast Wealth Management Olympic update. And now we will get back to Sandcast. As always, appreciate you guys listening to the show so much. Love all you guys. Love beach volleyball. Appreciate all the support. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's your, well, I mean, you're both kind of in different phases because this is the first time that you've picked up a younger partner, too. Yeah, totally. So how's, like, that role change been for you? Because, I mean, not only, like, you're playing with Trev, and obviously you guys are, are really good friends, too. Yeah, it's been a trip. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I'm not, it's funny, I'm picking up someone, like, with the same knowledge base as me, it seems yeah. like, you know? So we're kind of attacking it together with the same perspective almost. I mean, we literally, like, learned this game from day one basically on the same level. You know, right. obviously we've had different paths uh, um, to get to where we're at, but we, like, started at the exact same spot. Um, it's been fun. It's it's also frustrating because I don't have, like, the, the hide-in or whatever where I'm just, like, tell me what to do. 
you know right. and I want I w- keep wanting that but I'm also really excited I'm like if I want to be good at this game like in the next decade you know my 30s I need to be the guy to be able to make make those decisions and and being with Trevor and he's able to make some decisions that sometimes and I'm able to make it but we're both having to like we have to learn and like get better at this game strategically um so it's fun in that sense but it's also frustrating yeah um but that's like a step that I really want to take so it's it's worth uh, the the frustrating times for sure I know Jose is like not allowed in the box, which I, I hate that <clears throat> on the FIVB. That it's you can't really coach. silly. I think, I think, it's, think it's, so it's such a silly idea. Yeah. We have to pretend like we don't have coaches. Like every team, every one of the best it. teams in the world has a coach, but we have to pretend like we don't for the yeah, game. I, I just, Why? Dude, I it's, what's and, the upside? And I feel so bad for the coach. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting there like, like I know you, the answer. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> I was sitting And Marcio. he's like sitting by, the, the coaches can <laughs> sit like right at the edge of the banner too. So you're like, walking back to serve and they're like three feet from you and they're just like <laughs> let's go trying to mentally I'm like, send out you're the image saying of what something you right now with your eyes like <laughs> stop looking at me even because you can't tell me <laughs> yeah you got to learn a different language because i think there's some of those other teams might get away oh, with for a few, sure. few uh sliding some things in, yeah. in portuguese or german all the well, same. you're like oh okay yeah. Dude, sometimes the coaches, like, they'll, like, at World Champs, they put a coach's box, which is cool, like, so the coaches have a good view, but it's four chairs lined up next to each other, so the coaches have to sit next to each other, yeah, watching, and, like, Jose hates it, like, he'll go, like, sit, like, on, like, uh, a random, like, a volleyball or something in the corner by himself (laughs) to, like, get away from the other coaches, but... Yeah, I hate that. Yeah. Well, it's I was wondering, so like, even though he's not allowed in the box, I'm sure that, I mean, you spend so much time with him on the mm-hmm. road that even though you and Trev are still kind of in that role of, like, co-leaders, um, how much has Jose helped in terms of knowledge? And it's It's been a lot. I mean, it's interesting to have a, a coach like Jose because he's a, a player coach, you know? He's not the, he's not going to be, like, getting into the sports psychology of it and, like, writing out and planning out our, our he's not even going to write out our practices yeah, so you know he has it planned in his Mayer. head <laughs> right it's not a John Mayer um but he's the kind of guy where he's going to like instill that confidence in you just because you know he's been there before and the way that he talks about it like he can be speaking half Brazilian and <laughs> but you're just like you get that energy from him he's just like just do it just step on their throat like you know and and it, he's super credible because he's been there before. And he's like, when I was in this situation, you know, he's able to come from that perspective. Granted, like half the time it's like, and then I won eight record-breaking FIVBs <laughs> in a row with Emmanuel. I was like, well, you know, awesome. that's a, Thanks, coach. Yeah. No, like, I'd mean, love to do that, but <laughs> yeah. In in terms of a coach, I think that was a that was a really smart move by you guys. Because I mean, if you're thinking about like a super physical guy that ended up doing blocking and playing defense. Mm-hmm. Like, well, who would you want to have for both you and uh, right. uh, Trevor? Like, uh, that's, a, that's a great fit. And, like, in terms of your, like, you know, I want to be the guy that makes those decisions. Like, in baseball, it was always, like, some pitchers were just, they were the pitcher. The catcher makes the, makes the call, and I throw what he calls. Like, that's right. a, no mental lifting on my part right. whatsoever. Versus some of those other pitchers, who had an exact plan of what they wanted to do. And, like, if the catcher wasn't calling that plan, they, you know, they, they were they were off and right. the, the pitcher would override them. I think, you know, you guys are pretty intuitive regardless of whether you think you're making those strategic choices. Right. Like, uh, But, again, a lot of that's just going to be, you know, you'll probably be able to verbalize it better within, you know, the next three or four years of doing that. Yeah, exactly. But right now, like, you're kind of naturally making certain adjustments in games. Like, I've watched a couple of your mm-hmm. matches and you just – you know, you make smart moves and switch around and kind of uh, attack from different angles. And that's a very, like, you didn't say anything and you, nobody told you to do it, but it just kind of made sense in that moment. Right. So um, kind of like uh, if you ever talk to Rosie about volleyball, like exactly, he, he yeah. has a very hard time, like, articulating exactly how right. to do it and saying it. Like, Johnny Mayer would be excellent at, like, articulating all this stuff. Uh, but Rosie was a savant. And it still is. Just yeah. he's brilliant in terms of how he thinks about the game of volleyball. He like he knows it really, really well. Yeah. He just can't explain it super well, mm-hmm. and that's fine. You know, like that's you know if you're playing with him, you'll start to pick up on how he's doing things and why he's doing this. And 
and uh, you know that translates into him being the son of Jor El and as many victories as he yeah. has. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's pretty much hit the nail on the head right there. That's something we've been dealing with and like trying to talk through is like when do we just say screw it and be instinctual? Because every time we step on the court, we we kind of did talk about it. We want to trust our instincts because that's the best part about our games but we want to add that we don't want to leave the the uh, ad- advantage of the preparation and and the the uh, strategic planning based on their uh, tendencies and, and all that too you know so it's like we need to learn as much as we can and then we got to know when to like turn it off and go to instincts yeah it's because you know? it's a very fine line yeah you, know, you could you could sit in that like I, I've watched and I think it's uh, more the European teams than mm-hmm. anyone else where they just stick to their game plan. Yeah, exactly. And I've watched them serve. Like Stafford was playing a team, Stafford and Billy. They served Stafford the first nine balls. He put nine balls away without them even coming close to touching a <laughs> ball. Like thumping straight down. Perfect shot. Tenth ball, again, straight to Stafford. At what point do you just go, like, maybe throw one at the other guy? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I think, you know, uh, probably Americans and Brazilians tend to be a little bit more just because we play a lot more just on the beach, just messing around. Like, okay, this isn't really working. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, he, Jose will do a whole game plan, like, these last two tournaments. He'll do a whole game plan. Like, we're going at this guy. This is his stuff. We don't even talk about the other guy. And then at the end of it, he'll just be like, and if the other guy's setting out, then don't keep doing it. Just <laughs> fully switch it. <laughs> like, all right, well, we don't have any game plan if we switch it. Yeah. And, and he's talking like three or four points in a row. Like, don't go more than three or four points. Let him get in the rhythm. But it's just funny. I'm like, we just did a whole game plan on one guy, and yet he's still saying, but, but pff, completely yep. switch. Like, we could, ab- he, he's been saying this, like, we could absolutely win the game by doing the exact opposite of, all this stuff we're talking about. <laughs> so keep that in mind. I, which I is, which playing, is a great perspective. Yeah, I played with Nick Lucena where we were all, had our scouting report. This is what the guy's going to do. This is what I'm going to do as a blocker. And, you know, all right, great. And, you know, you point me and shoot. Like, I'll do what you say. And at 3-1 in the first game, Nick switched it around and went with the other guy. And we're like, wait a minute, what? It's like, that's how, that's how long it took. And we went with the other guy. We ended up pulling it out. But, yeah. like, yeah, like, it's, you know, uh, no plan survives the battlefield. Or as Mike Tyson would say, like, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because there's so many variables in beach volleyball. Yeah. Like, you know, you got the wind coming off the ocean. So then if you're serving the other guy on the good, like, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense if right. you just stay super stubborn with your plan it's like well so many things change you just have to figure out what's changing and go with it right this guy doesn't pass float serve as well well we're in a stadium so now the float serve is not moving as much mm-hmm. or we're indoors so the float serve looks really strange you know yeah. like there's a there's this a guy just there. sucks today yeah <laughs> we got a strat- great strategy on this other guy but this other guy's hitting in the net <laughs> yeah. so let's just he watched his warm up and he could barely get the ball over there. <laughs> totally yeah. yeah that's our guy it, totally it happens yeah. like we we just played um Seminoff. Uh, the seven footer from Russia, who's uh, they got fourth in the Olympics, I believe. Yeah, um, Chris Olnikov, great Austin player. Brower Musin. Yes, um, but we played him in Czech Republic a few like a month ago or whatever, and they just destroyed us. Like he he blocked us off the court, sir, ripping serve. Like we couldn't do anything, get anything by him. And in World Champs, we draw him again. Like I think we lost thirteen and twelve in. On the stadium court in check. You got, got 14. I'll give you 14 Thanks, seconds. Travis. I got my BBB up here. So we got smashed. <laughs> we got smashed. So it was really close. It was, yeah. Oh, never could've mind. Could have gone either way. Never mind. It was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At 14, yeah. Well, yeah. Who knows where it could have gone. But we, we, go to, we go to world champs, and we're totally attacking it. Like, you know, that, that game does not matter at all. And we watch warm-ups, and this guy is, there's some ego going on there for sure with Seminov. But he's like, the way that he he plays against, even when he was smashing us, he, he like he like roll his eyes after he blocks you straight down and be like, idiot, like <laughs> that was so easy so for American. me. Like he makes it, he acts like everything's easy, but he's warming up at World Champs. He shows up 15 minutes late, and we still have to walk to the center court, which is like a five minute walk, and like he's not gonna have much of a warm up. He's still doing like his half jumps, like not. He didn't even try to warm up really. I'm like, this is a world championships. Like, 
You're going to bring that warm-up out here? Yeah. Like, I know you smashed us last time, but we're coming at you right now. And I bet that warm-up and that attitude that you have is going to fucking bite you in the ass. And then we beat them into. Nice. And, yeah, it's just, it's just funny how it, it can switch sometimes. And he, like, that's a guy you, that, that you'd think, we should not go at him. Like, he's seven foot. He crushed right. us last time. We're kind of smaller blockers. But, like, with that warm-up, that particular day, w- under those circumstances, we yeah. can for sure go at him. Absolutely. And, I mean, his, his partner's really, really good, too. So that, that great. helps. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you know, if we, you, his partner was terrible. You probably still wouldn't go at him. But right. uh, fun story about that guy was uh, he's playing a match in Rome, you know, a bunch of years ago. And all of a sudden, they're stopping the match, and they're raking the court, and he's freaking out. And, and we find out later he lost his wedding ring oh. or something like that, like in the sand. No, oh, no. Nobody found it. Like, felt terrible for the guy. Me and Roger are playing later. I'm terrible, as always. That entire year was just me being <laughs> horrible, and Roger kind of rolling his eyes you're at all, me. You're always terrible trying to, trying to teach me, trying to teach me how to Trying to teach me how it works when it like, just wasn't working. So I, I reached out and see the shiny thing ring i was like all right so i say to the ref i'm like this is the other seven foot guy in the tournament the new <laughs> russian guy i was like make sure he gets his ring back yeah. and just yell out in the stands i was like hey you know seven off if you're here you're welcome yeah like, and then just went back to play got a little got crushed and, and moved on <laughs> he, he finds me in the hotel with a bottle of champagne no like, way oh thank you so much for finding my ring and i was just like no dude us tall guys we got to stick together like you know you don't know and he like made sure he's like no this is really pleased and he like gave me a bottle of champagne to kind of ice my wounds for the rest of my life yeah so so he is uh, a good guy he's a good guy (laughs) but i know exactly what you mean when you play like he plays he's got that like shoulder slump and like a little bit of like uh this is you know i can't believe i have to bother with this and me me and trev may like take anything that you do as like, oh yeah, I hate you now yeah. on the court, you know. <laughs> Trev, you see that guy? He just kicks sand towards you. He's like trying to smooth out a thing. Like, He's kicking sand at you, Trev. Are you gonna let him do that? And we just get all fired up. That's really funny. <laughs> but it works sometimes, yeah, right? It seems, that seems like something you learned from Jose. Like, yeah, 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 I can't oh. believe they would warm up with your ball, volleyball. It's like those are the court's volleyball, Jose. Like, yeah. Everybody's allowed to warm up. You this is an outrage. <laughs> Crush them. Yeah. <laughs> Sweep the leg down. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Cobra guy. Uh, <laughs> so you're you're back on the world tour. You leave for Tokyo on Friday. Uh, I got six days home. Yeah, because we're skipping okay. Portugal, which is this weekend yeah, during so. Ryan's event. Edmonton. In Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. Okay. A four star in Portugal, a three star in Edmonton. Yeah, the the American teams did not handle that one pretty sm- too smart because we, we only have three American teams in Portugal. We should mm. have had another team out there, but it was one of those like, you know, we don't want to sign up for the country quota when not teams can get into a three yeah. star. So all the lower ranked teams signed up for the three star, and now there's like literally four teams in the three star instead of. And we're we were signed up for Portugal, but the way that season's been going for us, like playing five weeks in a row, is just a not a good idea in terms of finishes. When we've been getting rest, we've been playing better. Um, so, yeah, we bailed, which screwed up whoever went to Edmonton or, you know, whatever. But, yeah. Were you So, Olympic qualification is your best 12 finishes over the period, right? Yeah. And you're almost at 12, right? Are we? Are I don't you, know. I feel like you're probably close. A lot of people have been telling me about my Olympic uh, status <laughs> since, we, since <laughs> World Champs. I was like, I haven't even looked. I have no idea. Is this... I, I remember, know this is a good thing, but yeah. I remember a match where you served an ace and then went back to serve while everybody else was shaking hands because yeah. you didn't realize the match was over. Yeah, so I think this that's is what a, I that's a great route for you. Just, <laughs> they'll tell you if you're in the Olympics. Yeah. Like, they'll let you know. Like, Dude. You, like I, I guarantee you, Sean Scott will keep you posted right, if, you, okay. if you have to fly out to Tokyo. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So well, Travis, that, you can remind me too. <laughs> I'll keep, let me know. I'll keep you and Trev posted. <laughs> but yeah, you guys have played uh, in a bunch of events, like, and you guys were growing, grinding late last year too. Like yeah, you did yeah. Las Vegas, and you know you did some runs earlier this year that a lot of other teams didn't do. So I want to say we have about seven finishes that we're going to keep. Yeah. And probably another five or so that we're going to add. I'm hoping that we're adding right, a lot right. more. But yeah, in terms of tournaments played, like I don't think we're going to. I don't know. Five star twenty fifth might even you might even keep that because there's only three of those. The five points stars. are outrageous for five. Stars. I know that's why I was really mad when we. I had, all right, full disclosure. If you guys didn't watch, I had two swings, 
against Canada. To seal the match, to go to 17th in Stad, which, you know, you, you get out of pool and all of a sudden you can go win the tournament. Like, right. Yeah. So I was too. not happy with myself there. Um, but yeah. You guys did a good job just coming back to win the first set anyway. You're down 16 12. Yeah, and then we blew it and let them come back in the second. <laughs> yeah. You watched it? I watched it, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't think anyone would watch that. <laughs> if there's um, one who will. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it was a good battle. I mean, that's a good team. But um, in terms of Olympic finishes, yeah, I'm hoping that we're, we're only about halfway through. We, we have about six finishes that I think are really good. Um, and I'm hoping we don't have any. By the end of it, we don't have any, like, 17ths, 25ths in the mix there. Right. Hopefully not many 9ths either. Yeah, because I was when I was keeping up with um, Hamburg, and I saw that you guys were in the ninth place match. That was better than a second in a four star. Oh, really? It was crazy. Holy crap! Yeah. So if, if you do well at majors, like April and Alex, like getting a second and then winning Stad, like oh, they just in. punched their ticket. They're in, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a uh, that's a really tough one for the American women because there's like are some really good teams. So many like, good teams. Yeah, like. I thought uh, I, I would have bet dollars to donuts that Kerry and Brooke wouldn't have had a shot just because they were so far behind to start the year. Mm-hmm. Right. And they did just some amazing things, played a lot of tournaments to get that chance. And, like, you know, they're still playing really well. Yeah. It's just uh, now they're by, grinding it out with Sarah and Summer. Emily and Kelly have done well. They, they got a second at, uh, you know, one of the big ones. So did they, want a, they want a four-star, Kerry and Brooke. Because yeah. I was on the grind. We were on that trip. They they played in Brazil, I think. So they did the Brazil to China, won China, and then did the trip to Czech Republic, which we were all, like, messed up on. Mm-hmm. I see them the day... They had to go country quota qualifier after winning China. And um, I see them, and they're both sick. Like, snuff, their noses are, like... <laughs> Like, yeah. they're, like, drooling, basically, and sick, <laughs> and they just won their qualifier. So they played for two days, and I'm, like, barely surviving, and I don't have to play till the main draw. Carrie's like, don't come close to me. I might throw up on you. <laughs> and then they go and got, like, a top five, I think, in Czech Republic as well. They were really hot going right. into Hamburg. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, the the run that they're making. Although, if you're getting, you know, if you're gonna doubt someone, don't don't make it care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, I mean, it's uh, she may be the like in terms of mentally the greatest athlete I've ever shaken hands with, yeah. and I've shaken hands with some good ones. And I don't mean female athlete, yeah. or male athlete, or like any anybody in Dude. terms of being able to put herself in competitive mindset yeah. and get after it. Like she might be the tops. Totally. Uh, Her. Like I mean, I'm actually blown away at just the American women. Like since I've been, first of all, Misty retired right right before I came out so I didn't really get to experience that one but Carrie for sure like you're saying but how about April yeah April's with, a like yeah. she's been through 10 partners since I have <laughs> been on tour and she just doesn't matter world championships let's go Lauren yeah. let's go to the final April world champs you want to play it all right let's go to the final like it's ridiculous. Yeah, she had a world champs. Uh, my my first one with Whitney Pavlik. Like her partner yeah. was out and just like, okay, great, let's let's take a fourth. And yeah. we're like, yeah. that was world champs. That was world with champs Whitney Pavlik. With Whitney Pavlik and Whitney like didn't even have any points or anything like that. Like Whitney was a good volleyball player, but and everyone's you know, like world telling me player. like congratulate this whole week. People are telling me congratulations. I'm like, why? Because I finished with two losses in a row. <laughs> I get it. Like it is it <laughs> is a great it is a great finish, but like. April did it with Whitney, not to take anything away from Whitney, but that's her, her fourth partner that she's yeah. gotten to the semifinals at a world championships with. Like, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yep. She's, she's definitely on another level. Yeah. So, like, it's easy to see, like, tries goal, obviously, Olympics and carries Olympics. And for, I feel like, for the guys, like, kind of in the middle to the top, like, yourself, it's harder to, like, pinpoint what the big overarching beach goal would be so. Like, have you set right. any kind of longer term, or are you just kind of going? Let's I, win her I, I, I am a I am a lazy goal guy. Like I, I don't necessarily. Cause, well, it's it's not. I don't know if lazy is the right word because I I'm, I can push very hard at things that I want right. to do. But uh, like 
I remember somebody saying like, "Oh, you I, you want to say, you want to win a gold medal in the Olympics?" It's like, "Well, I've never won a gold medal on the world tour yet." So shouldn't that be the goal right. first? Like, you want to qualify for the Olympics? Well, right. I've never been one of the top two teams in the U.S. Like, shouldn't that be the goal before I like? Right. Um, so my goal, you know, overarching was always just to see how good of a volleyball player I could be. Like, what's what is me at my max? Um, I don't know if I've reached it yet. I might have. You know, I might be you know right. on the down slope, getting a little bit older and slower. But uh, like that's been the overarching theme for me like as a volleyball player. I think it's cool because you're you're keeping yourself more present. You know, you're you're kind of observing like, what can I do? I know I'm gonna put in the work. I know I'm gonna work hard, and then just observing the outcome that comes with that, rather than like, I have to do this, and you're like constantly getting ahead of yourself. Right. Yet you're not taking the steps in the place that you're at. You know, yes. a lot of people will do that. Like, yeah, Olympic gold, like. I even was kind of hesitant to set that as my goal. Goal, my goal. Mine is more. I want to go to the Olympics with the intention to win it. Right. I don't want to just make it and be like, yes, we made it. Like a lot of right. teams, I feel like are like, okay, now we're here. I want to go and try to win it. That's my goal. Yeah. If, if I so, get the goal, I don't know. You know. And, and you also have to think like, you know, I, if I if my goal was I want to play in the Olympics, that's what I want to do. Well. It's not looking good for 2020. Like, uh, we're not in a good spot there. <laughs> right. And then, like, uh, you know, what is 2024? I'm going to be 40 years old. You know, I'm, you know, maybe. But, like, that would mean that I've already failed at volleyball. Like, I wouldn't consider my career a failure. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like I've done quite a few good things, quite a few bad things, learned, experienced. Like, you know, it's, it's you know, the mosaic of your life. You know, this is, uh, this is definitely a, a positive. But I don't want to look back at it like, well, I did set that goal and I didn't come close to it because I wasn't, you know, I was the fourth ranked team in 2016 rather than the second ranked team. Right. So we didn't get to go. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, uh, yeah, uh, my immediate goal is to go uh, do my last lame duck partnership with uh, Johnny <laughs> Johnny Hyde and see if we can't win that tournament. Uh, send us out with a little bit of a bang and then uh, get ready for the last couple of AVPs. Yeah. So when... Uh Win with Miles. Yeah, right? That'd be you fun. You get him as first. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I think he's only played in like one AVP main draw. Like, he doesn't have a lot of uh, AVP yeah, experience him just because. I mean, Kurt Toppel. Yeah, a lot of that. of like 16 or something and took fifth. Right. That's it's, the last AVP he played in? It might have been. Obviously, because he did the whole P1440 route right. and. Yeah, because him, him and Bill just went out and did the world tour thing and avoided he's, AVPs he's for a while. He's certainly making the tour deeper. Like, he's one of those players. Yeah. Like, I mean, Troy, you know, added a new player on tour that's, like, a top, top guy. I think Tim coming in by himself as, like, a free agent really, like, raised his stock. Not that he and his brother weren't great, but they were kind of middle-of-the-pack guys. And now now we have, like, a lot of individuals who yeah. are, like... Some really fun, like, seventh-place matchups. Yeah. And I think Miles is in there, uh, like... Pretty much just jumps right into that group. Um, yeah, the way I mean, you, you definitely don't want to sleep on him. You know, no. he, he can yeah. he can play. He can do a lot of yeah. good things. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching you guys because I think like you guys are fully capable of winning. Nice. Said, especially nice. like when you look at Hermosa. When we had Rosie here, he was cracking up. He's like, "So everyone's gonna be in Tokyo, and I'm gonna be home. <laughs> no one else is playing. Okay, you can just go to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be a fun one." Oh, that's I think depressing. Rose is playing with David Lee I think in so. Hermosa, so yeah. that'll be a fun one, too. It's yeah. a fun one to watch. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rosie's always fun to watch, especially in Hermosa Beach. Like yeah. the, uh, the Raiders, I'm sure, will be out in force and yeah. is ready to hackle anybody that uh, stands in their way. So, yeah, that's that's going to be a good event. Yeah. Man, it, uh, so since you were our first real guest the last time we didn't have our final question ready for you oh so there's a final yeah, question now, now we can yeah. add an I also to remember it. you guys saying that you didn't take a picture and you were like hey can you come back and take a picture when I had already been we'll home make sure to get minutes. a picture this time yeah, sure got the phone ready. <laughs> um, but our, so our final question is if you had to give any one piece of advice to an up and coming beach volleyball player what would that piece of advice be ooh that's a great question um you can take your time. We'll try to snap no, some water and take pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I I would say kind of enjoy the process. Like it, it is going to be a process, and it's kind of like we were saying just a second ago with the goals. Like, you can set a goal of you know you want to be a main draw AVP athlete. Well, 
maybe physically that's not what you're capable of. Like, and that's not a bad thing to say that some people are not going to be able to. If you're five, six, and slow, it's going to be very, very difficult to right. be a professional beach volleyball player. It's just how it works. But like, if you enjoy the process of getting better, you enjoy the like the work that you have to put in to change yourself. Um, one you're going to, like, the experience is going to be very rewarding. Like, you're going to be happy to, while you do it. But the second is, that's going to cross over into whatever else you do in your life. You know, like, uh, everybody, when they're done with beach volleyball, you know, for, aside from Johnny Hyden, who's going to play until he's 65. <laughs> and, uh, he's going to be the only guy who's on Social Security while playing professional beach volleyball. Uh, but everybody else, like, you know, once you're 40, you're going to move into kind of the next phase of your life. You know, some other way that you, you know, support yourself or make money or, you know, that's something that you're really passionate about. About and, and those you know skills that you learn of you know the the failures and the successes and how to improve yourself like that's really important to whatever it is that you do next so uh, yeah enjoy the process and kind of embrace it and I think that would be uh, that would be my advice to the youngsters and if yeah. you're really tall don't even bother it's not, it's not a bunch more like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah just hang out go go play indoor play you, indoor you won't volleyball. get a single good partner yeah, so <laughs> yeah. If, you're, if you're another seven foot guy just uh, it's it's not all it's cracked up you know get into basketball <laughs> where can our listeners follow along um just your journey. I know you're big on Twitter. I love your Twitter account. You're the I only one. It. You're the only one. <laughs> yeah, the, the only one who enjoys me writing about I know Tesla. Everything all the time. that's going on with Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I you know, it's one of those things that you gotta, you know, share what you think is fascinating, what you're passionate about. And I've been like super passionate about the you know financial aspect yeah. of you know Taking the CFA level one, or taking two levels, uh, taking the level yeah, two. Yeah, how'd you do? Because last time we had you on, you were studying. Uh, so last time I had me on it was for the level one, I okay. believe. That was a, and I passed level one. Congratulations. Hey. Took level two, uh, maybe about four weeks ago. I don't find out for another four weeks if okay. I passed. Just did not feel good. It was, yeah. it was a rough one. This is, <laughs> this is not an easy, easy test. But again, like, you know, if you trust the process, like I put in, at least 500 hours of dedicated studying. Like, there's no way that you don't get better, smarter, more right. knowledgeable after doing something like that. Um, so yeah, like I, I really enjoy the finance part. I, I started getting into Tesla Twitter because this company just doesn't make any sense. Like it doesn't like <laughs> if if the things I'm learning are right. Well, then this doesn't logically work. Right. And I have met with a ton of really smart people because of it. Like I literally was down at the beach talking with a guy, he's a portfolio manager who, you know, is as smart as anyone I've ever met and just talking with him, you know, he's watching his daughter play volleyball. We're just kind of shooting the, shooting the breeze, but you know, just unbelievable opportunities to meet and talk to really bright people in this industry that I find fascinating and might try to work my way into once volleyball is done. Uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been super fun, but uh, if you're a volleyball fan, my sincere apologies because my Twitter account <laughs> is terrible for volleyball fans. I always crack up <laughs> when I, terrible. I'll uh, check BVB. It's like, all right, well, they just played. And then I'll go on Twitter and like immediately, just like you're talking about Tesla. I'm like, you really shifted fast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> sometimes it's on the bus home. Like I read what's going on. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. How are they talking about full self-driving? They don't have any autonomous miles in the air. Like, I, like, I got to share with everybody. And I get a whole bunch of hate from people that like like the company and like a whole bunch of different but they guys. make sweet cars <laughs> yeah but it doesn't make sense it doesn't yeah they've never made any money the, the company has made zero money like they've lost billions of dollars but anyway yeah uh, funny funny thing is a bunch of AVP players now have cars have I know Tesla's. Yeah. Tesla's like, like a uh, big car for AVP players now. yeah yeah and uh, if you're a California person uh, it's not a bad call like it really especially the, the short range model like uh, I wouldn't recommend the S or the X because the ludicrous mode uh, yeah and all those kind of things like the, you, you don't pay for the add-ons autopilot comes with it full self-driving is a complete scam there's nothing there like if you pay for it you're just giving Tesla full self-driving yeah. so they're pretending that they have autonomous vehicles they've been saying it for three or something years where you can put down a deposit on their ability to we're going to transfer it over and just have full self-driving cars I feel like Elon Musk is just playing jokes on people <laughs> it's yeah it's but possible. But think about if you got paid a lot of money. Like, imagine if you paid, like, thousands of dollars oh, yeah, and it no, turns yeah. out to be a joke. I'd be furious. Oh, yeah, right? for sure. So, like, uh, the the fans think that they're just going to one day flip a switch and all of a sudden the car drives itself and you can take a nap in the back seat. And well, because they can do updates from 
Right. You don't have to take the car. Right. They can just, just your car's in the garage. Through software. Oh, it's, up, it's updated. <laughs> yeah, over the air updates. So that's kind of the you know rationale for this. And I don't know how deep you want to get into this on the Sandcast podcast. But <laughs> now uh, we're getting the stuff they want. Right. right. Yeah. Cast. So like all of the leaders in autonomous technology think or one use lidar, which is something that senses buildings and it's just a redundancy system to make sure that you don't run into something solid. Lidar. That's lidar. Right. So it's the a near similar like radar. I it sounds like radar for liars. <laughs> like so when the, you hit Tesla, yeah, the, right. the lidar is just going <laughs> off. <laughs> so yeah, so one, you need that, and uh, two, anybody who's high in the industry, you know, uh, Uber, Waymo, all these companies are like, yeah, full self driving is decades away. Like it's not around the yeah. corner. Um, I feel like the roads have to be ready for it more importantly than the cars, right? Like. It's it's one of the most complex problems you can right. throw your throw your hat at. Like it's really not easy. And and the tough part is is that like a, a company like Tesla has Elon Musk driving with his hands off the wheel and look the car's driving itself, and they don't do any marketing. They don't buy ads or anything like that. So that's really the only time you see it. And if people are promoting that autopilot is full self driving. Well, I know that you you can do autopilot, but. The car will scream at you if you don't have both your hands on the wheel. They had to make that adjustment oh. because people have died. Like, oh, because they really? take their hands off the wheel. Yeah, like a few different people have died using autopilot because it runs them into something. Like <laughs> literally, like oh it, it accelerated into a concrete barrier. This was like three years ago. The most recent yeah. one was about three months ago, Jesus. and it decapitated a guy because it went under an eighteen wheeler. Like it, the and the autopilot kept going, like it just didn't stop. Didn't. Like, you know, there's there's all sorts of instances of, like, there was a drunk driver passed out in the seat where there's, he, you know... The he cop, just threw on autopilot. And he threw on autopilot, <laughs> and the car's going 60 miles an hour while him passed out, and the cop had to figure out how to, like, get yeah. in front of the car and stop it. And he luckily knew enough about Tesla to, like, kind of box it in and get it to a corner. But, like, it's not a full... It's a level two autonomous system, which is basically cruise control on right. steroids. Mm-hmm. And if, like, you use it the right way, like I talked to the other ABP players, use it on a highway where there's no construction going yeah. on and you know the road, you're not trying to make turns off it, that's been fantastic. Use it as it's, cruise control. It's, it's going to be really awesome good for you. It's going to make the ride way more relaxing and easier and every once in a while. You still have to pay attention, but it's great. Like, if you start to confuse that with a car that's going to drive itself, more people are going to die because of this. Mm-hmm. And, like, people have. Like, you don't realize that, like, People have died on autopilot. That's insane. That like, no, no, no problem. Like Tesla's not at fault. Like they have in their legalese that, you know, you don't have to have your hand. You have to have your hands on the wheel, so they're not responsible. Right. If you don't You're still driving. Right. right. So it's uh, yeah, it's you know, all these kind of little things. Aside from the fact that they never make money and you know they keep lying and they have all sorts of emissions issues, um, but. Uh, you guys don't want to listen. And they barely that. have enough that space a, for for volleyballs in the back. That's the piece of advice that we need at the up and coming. <laughs> don't like, go on autopilot. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, avoid <laughs> autopilot. Just you know, autopilot's poorly named. Think of it as cruise control on steroids. If it's cruise control on steroids, you're right. driving the car. It's awesome. Like, like that. You know, it's funny. Like now, if you don't, my mother in law was telling me. If you don't put your hands on the steering wheel, it'll disable it. It'll, yeah. It'll like, so disable. Like for 15 seconds and then it'll kick you off. So now all of a sudden the car went from autopilot and your hands aren't on it and says, your hands aren't on the wheel. We're not going to drive either. Right. And then the car is <laughs> free for all. Right. I mean, so, if you yeah, don't get on it quick it, enough. It, just, it pulls you over the side of the road and it won't let you do it for, gotcha. for another, another certain amount of miles. But, of course, then people beat it because it is a torque sensor on the wheel. So basically they can tell if there's some kind of pressure on the wheel. So if you do something like you tape a water bottle to the wheel, well, there's going to be a little uh-huh. bit of torque on the wheel. So now you don't have to put your hands on it. And there's different kind of companies, very unscrupulous ones that have nothing to do with Tesla. Like, right. I want to put this out there that they're doing this. But other ones, it's just like, oh, yeah, they're autopilot cheats where it puts a little weight on your steering oh, wheel. Right. Um, because uh, like uh, uh, all the other ones that are getting into auto, uh, auto uh, autonomous driving have driver monitor systems. Basically, like uh, GM's uh, Super Cruise will have something where it watches your eyes. And if you're not paying attention to the road, like the drivers looking huh. around it'll it'll warn you and say hey you're not w- watching the road autopilot doesn't have that so you can get in the back seat of the car if you have a weight on the on your wheel oh, which wow. there's videos of people doing that no on highways at 65 miles an hour and you know it's crazy yeah it's and it's you know uh, as long as people are doing like 
if you understand the risks and you decide to take on that risks, by all means. But like you're doing that on a public highway, like right. somebody else is going to get hit. Like right. There's going right. to be an unintended acceleration incident where somebody else gets hurt because you didn't realize that the car doesn't drive itself. Like that's pretty unscrupulous in my in my mind. Yeah. The good news is you get you get to waive parking fees down in California beaches because it's electric. Right. Really. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's another thing that drives me nuts. For beach volleyball players, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. how much do we pay on parking ticket to meters? That. We pay so God, much on meters. <laughs> it's like... I forgot it was Monday. Street yeah. sweeping and and the, like, $5 meters. It's like... Yeah. I remember back in the day, you throw a quarter in the in the meter, and you're good for, like, an hour. Now it's like... Right. Ten minutes. You got, yeah, ten minutes. You gotta warm up. What? And for you people that don't live in California, street sweeping will say stuff like the first and third Mondays of every month. And you're like, is it the third Monday of the yeah. month? Mm-hmm. The fourth? And you forget. And like, it's just designed to absolutely ding oh, you yeah. on that. Like, oh, it yeah. drives me nuts. It's like 45 bucks. They don't tell you, which is great. Or I'd have been towed about 200 times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's almost fun. It's like I got a good laugh out of it. I was like, man, I was I was overdue. <laughs> you <laughs> know, know we that. live in California with all this Tesla talk and uh, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Parking the meters. The and... like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Ryan, it's great to have you back. Good luck to you and Miles in Hermosa. Uh, good luck in Edmonton. I appreciate it. Bro. Yeah, go win that. Yeah, we'll try. Good it. to have you home. Yeah, thank great you. Great to see your face. All <laughs> six days. <laughs> I'm about to pass out. A little jet lag. Yeah. 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 Yeah.